reading, so thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I'll have more to say about the Alpha Course, but let us begin with prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. I thank you for all those that you have brought out, and I just pray that you would bless this Alpha Course. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, tighten fellowship, that we would understand uh, that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that you have great plans for us. Send your Holy Spirit to make this uh, truth uh, to seek, um, find fertile ground in our hearts, Lord, that you might uh, bless us with bearing fruits, 20-fold, 40-fold, 100-fold. And Lord, bless also this food to our bodies, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, as the food is being delivered, um, I'll give you a little bit of a um, uh, logistics, if you will, for the rest of the course. Today is different. Uh, and can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, let me know. We can get uh, myself microphone. Uh, I can get amplified. But the first course is different, or the first class is different than the rest. <coughs> typically, what we'll have is you'll have breakfast, I'll do a short teaching, and then you will break into groups. And so you will go throughout you know, various places within the church, and you will discuss the teaching. Uh, this one is lit, just meant to whet your appetite. Uh, this is, um, I love Alpha. It started in uh, London at Holy Trinity Brompton. I love that the church that started was also named Holy Trinity. And uh, <laughs> it's, it, it was meant for two reasons. One, those who are coming into the church, it was a means to get them on the same page theologically. What is it that we believe as Christians? And so for some of you, you're going to hear this, you're like, oh, I know this. But I would encourage you, what I love about this course, and I taught it, I mean, I've got to have taught it more than two dozen times now. It is great because it solidifies what it means to be a follower of Christ. And there's some great apologetics uh, in the course, as well as some important teachings about the Holy Spirit. And so uh, today is really uh, just a, a kickoff of what the Lord has in store. And so what I'm going to encourage you to do after I do the teaching is to just get to know the people that you were seated with. You know, have good conversation, and uh, I will try not to go too terribly close to our 10-15 uh, second service, but uh, I really encourage the, the 8 a.m. service, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, that today is the first one that we did, and uh, I was very encouraged by the outreach turn of people, and um, I'm just excited about what the Lord has in store. And so with that, let's uh, turn over to the course. And the, did everyone receive uh, one of the books, the Alpha books? Uh, would you raise your hand, and we'll make sure to bring it to you. So it looks like Gwendolyn needs one. It looks like uh, Matt needs one. This is a gift from us. Uh, I also have um, a schedule. And so if you don't have a schedule, essentially we're meeting every Sunday through June and July, with the exception of, I think, July 7, because right. that is the one closest to um, the 4th of July. And some of you might have plans for the 4th of July. So take those schedules, um, take the books. I don't go through all of the uh, subjects that are in the Alpha book. I've condensed them into eight different classes, and so you'll find those in that schedule. But the books will still be helpful, and uh, just to confuse you, my order is not their order, and so you, you'll have to look in the index and find out which, uh, which one I'm teaching on. Uh, but for example, you should have in the first one uh, is there more to life than this? Is that true? Is that in the book? Okay, yeah. good, 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 good. Okay, well with that, you can turn there uh, and you can keep notes. Does anyone need a pencil or, or pen or anything like that? I know some, um, some uh, are available. And so if you need a pen, raise your hand and we'll make sure to, to bring you one. But with that, let's start with this question. Is there more to life than this? So the question is this. What has been your experience with Christianity? Boring? Untrue? Irrelevant? I think these are a lot of the experiences from people in the Western culture. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of these questions in Alpha. And what I would encourage you to do as well, this of course is in the following classes, when, when you get into your groups, I want you to, to ask any question that you have. Nothing is going to be received you know, with judgment or scorn, this is an opportunity for you guys to ask any question that is just burning on uh, on your heart and your mind uh, about what it means to be a follower of Christ, about what the Bible teaches. 
And so know that, uh, it, well, and know too, don't be judgmental if you hear something that, you know, you find um, surprising. And so it, it, it just is a safe place for us to be able to answer some of these important questions that the culture is really asking about Christianity. So what's, your, what's been your experience in life? This is my experience. I found that uh, we all have a hunger. And I'll just walk you back through my life. When I was in second grade, I desperately wanted a BB gun. Did anyone ever uh, have a desire for a BB gun? <laughs> There's a whole movie, a Christmas movie, yes. that's uh, built around this. But, you know, I got a BB gun, and uh, I found that it didn't quite satisfy. Well, then in the sixth grade, what I really wanted were Reebok pumps. Now, and I know I'm dating myself here. Does anyone remember that time in the yeah. 90s when the, the pumps were there? And so I was disappointed because my parents, well, they were cheap. And so I didn't get Reebok pumps. I got LA gear, if you remember that. Which wasn't the same thing. It was like a half thing, and it wasn't a basketball. And I just felt, you know, oh, it was terrible. So I had them, but again, it, it didn't satisfy me. Then I got to high school, and I really wanted a Jeep Wrangler. And I wanted specifically a green Jeep with a khaki top. And so you're like, that's what you drive now. <laughs> so you can see how these longings stick with us, right? What's going on? Well, Blaise Pascal refers to this as the God-sized gap. And this is what we find in the Western culture. We all yearn for these different things, and we try to fit them in our lives. But what we see is that God has created a vacuum within us, that nothing will fill that void except himself. And that's why Blaise Pascal called it the God-sized gap. And that's why even in my own experience, I can get a BB gun. I can get a Reebok pumps. I can get a Jeep. But does it fill that void? The answer, of course, is no. Russell Brand is a comedian and actor. And listen to what he says on the subject. He says, drugs and alcohol are not my problem. Reality is my problem. Drugs and alcohol are my solution. But that begs the question, what is your solution? <coughs> What's at the heart of the Christian faith? Well, Sunday school answer, right? Jesus. And what did he say? He said, I am the bread of life. What does that mean? This is John 6, 35. Uh, All those who come to me shall neither hunger nor thirst. What, what is he getting at? Well, he's filling that void. He is the one that will quench the thirst, that will satisfy. That's what he is saying. So, have you ever wondered this question? What's the purpose behind life? I think the Western culture is really wrestling with this right now. It's not an accident that we get frustrated with life. I mean, if you think about the, the modern idea, I mean, you work, you pay bills, and then you die, right? And people look at that, and they're like, there's got to be more than that. That's just depressing. We grow frustrated and tired because we were made for something more than consumerism. Jesus also said, I am the way and the truth and the life. So let's look at these statements. So first, I am the way. Now, a lot of people spend a lot of time and money trying to find the way or meaning behind life. Leo Tolstoy was driven by this question. He was the author of War and Peace and Anna Karenina, and here was Tolstoy's quest. As a child, he rejected Christianity, and he began trying to find the way or meaning of life in various places. First, he thought life was all about having fun, and so he drank and was promiscuous. But it just left him empty. Next, he thought money might be the answer. But after inheriting a lot of money from his family, he found that money was like seawater. The more you drank, the thirstier you became. After that came fame and success. And so he wrote some of the greatest novels the world has ever known. And yet it still didn't satisfy. He was driven mad by one question. And this is what he writes. He says, what meaning has my life that the inevitability of death does not destroy? The philosophers and scientists must have an answer, he thought. And this is what they told him, literally. This is what he writes down. This is the answer that the philosophers and scientists in Russia gave him when he posed the question. They said, in the infinity of space and the infinity of time, infinitely small particles mutate with infinite complexity. That was his answer. Not surprisingly, that didn't satisfy, right? <laughs> 
Eventually, he found within the very poor people of Russia the answer to his quest. They had found the answer in Jesus Christ. Though they had nothing, they were more happy than Tolstoy, than all of his friends, and than all the philosophers and scientists. Not just Tolstoy. You see this in uh, famous people, right? Like Freddie Mercury. Does anyone know who Freddie Mercury is? Yes. Some of you know his songs, right? Yes. I was, I was listening to them this morning. Uh, we Are the Champions. Have you heard We Are the Champions? Uh, what is it? Uh, a Little Thing Called Love. I think that's another one. Shortly before his death, he gave an interview and said that he was desperately lonely. Listen to what he writes. He says, you can have everything in the world, yet still be the loneliest man. Success has brought me world idolization and millions of dollars, but it has prevented me from having the one thing that we all need, a loving, ongoing relationship. Ultimately, there is only one loving, ongoing relationship, and that is a relationship with God. And Jesus said, I am the way. No one gets to the Father except what? Does anyone know? Amen. Through me. Well, what difference does it make? It makes all the difference in the world. It helps us understand what is going on all around us. Uh, those of you who have been with me for a while know that one of my favorite people to quote is C.S. Lewis. And the reason that I'm a Christian is because I think it makes sense of what we experience in this life. And he's got this great quote that I have up here. He says, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun is risen. Not only because I see it, but by it I see everything else. I'm going to just stop here and go off script as I'm you know, prone to do. But I'll often be driving uh, around in my Jeep, you know, going to or from work. And the thing that struck me this past couple of weeks is, you know one of the greatest proofs that God exists and that Jesus is who we claim to be? It's our sinfulness. I look around and I see just you know, sin just having its way with people. And it's like, how does that make any sense? Why is this happening? And I would put to you, the only way it makes sense is if what the Bible tells us is true. If Jesus is who he claimed to be. It really does make sense of a whole lot. And, and I would put to you, how do you explain sin otherwise? And why do you get upset when people sin against you? Why do you get upset when people cut you off in traffic, right? That's probably why I have to stop when I'm driving around. <laughs> Where does that come from? And Lewis, again, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun is risen. Not only because I see it, but by it I see everything else. Jesus is the lens through which we see God. You want to know what God is like? Look to God the Son, Jesus Christ. He is also the lens by which we see the world in a totally different dimension and clarity. And I'm going to talk about this in my sermon. In a, in a moment. Right now there's a war between the secularists and the traditionalists. And both are wrong. What we need is Jesus. And when he was in his early ministry, uh, he, he put the world upside down. And, and uh, I mean, everyone is flocking to him. But is that true? Was everyone coming to him? Now, some people were getting upset, weren't they? And then that's always the case. As Paul says, we are the aroma of Christ to some, and to others the aroma of death. Because if Jesus is who he claimed to be, well then when he comes, he will draw his own to himself, and yet others will be repelled. Jesus also said, I am the truth. Some say, that is great for you, but it's not for me, right? But logically, that can't be the case. Because if it's true, it must be true for everyone. It can't be both. Again, C.S. Lewis. Christianity, if false, is of no importance. And if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. We're going to look at these truths during Alpha. It's these truths that persuaded me that Jesus Christ was more reliable than all the other options. And just thinking about this, I mean, we're children of the Enlightenment. You look at the scientific method. What you do when you do research is you throw out a theory. And, and you say, well, which is the best theory that explains what we are observing? And what I would put to you is that when it comes to looking and observing at life, it's Jesus Christ that makes the most sense of what you and I interact with every single day. And it's why we look at death and we're like, oh man, you know, I don't want that. Why? Why do we have that feeling? Because if we're all just, you know, here by a random chance, time, and progression, what does it matter if we die? Why do we wrestle with that? wrestle with it because God has put immortality in our souls. 
and we look at death as something that is not right. And I've noticed this. I've had to do uh, five funerals in the last uh, about two weeks. And it's just amazing to me how uh, it doesn't matter if you believe or unbelieve, when death comes, it is never greeted with, you know, um, happy clapping. It's never good. Why? Well, again, it's because of Jesus. If he is who he claimed to be, he is the one that makes sense out of it. And what did he proclaim? He said, I am the resurrection and the life. That's what we say. And again, isn't truth one of the things that we all long for, right? There are atheists in the world, but there are also many highly intelligent people that have put their faith in Christ. And just look at the pioneers of modern science. And this, I, we have to say this, because Christians do not need to see ground in science. And in fact... Christianity is standing out from the academy right now because the academy is going nuts. <coughs> Look at all the modern pioneers of modern science. Descartes, Newton, Kepler, Galileo, Copernicus, Faraday, Boyle, Mendel, Calvin, Pasteur, Lister, Maxwell, Simpson, or even one of the greatest scientists of today, which is Franklin <coughs> Collins. And this is a guy that maps out the human genome. Okay? He put his faith in Christ because of the overwhelming evidence our own overwhelming historical evidence of Jesus Christ. The reason he turned to Jesus was because one of his patients asked him what he believed. And so he's one of these doctors that both does research, but he is a practicing medical doctor. And he was doing rounds. And he came across an older African-American woman. And she, you know, was the one lying, you know, potentially on her deathbed. And she started to ask him about what he believed. And she said, you don't believe in Jesus? You don't believe in the resurrection? And then she started to ask him just very basic questions. And he realized, he's like, oh my goodness, I've never even examined the evidence. And he was stumped by her. Isn't that fascinating? Here's this medical doctor who is this world famous guy. And this sweet little old lady is like, you don't believe the resurrection? Are you kidding me? Stumped by her confidence, he began to look at the evidence. And do you know what happened to him? He became a Christian. He's like, I do believe in you see, have you considered the evidence? That's why the truth matters. But there is a difference between head and heart knowledge. It's one thing to know that honey tastes, you know, what it tastes like. You know, if you were to describe it, you'd say, well, it's sweet. It has kind of like a calming, you know, feel to it. But it's a different thing to actually taste it, right? Oh, man. When Jesus said, I am the truth, he was saying that he was a truth that we could experience, too. Not just that there is evidence for the resurrection, but that we, too, can experience the resurrection and have a personal relationship with the risen Lord Jesus. Which leads us to the third part. He says, I am the life. He said in John 10, I came to give life and to give it abundantly. And, we came, and when he came, he addressed the things that spoil this life. Namely, sin and guilt. Again, back to this issue of sin. And then when we recognize our sin, then we have guilt. Jesus came to take away our sin and guilt. Now, many people struggle with past sins and fear God's existence because they're like, if God does exist, I'm in big trouble because there's no way he's going to deal well with me. But on the cross... Do you remember what Jesus, one of the dying words, was? It is finished. What is he talking about? The wrath of God. On the cross, the wrath of God was satisfied. That's what we see. That's why Christ came. He came to take his, our sins upon him, that we might take on his righteousness. And I'm not just coming up with fancy words there. This comes from Paul, from 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. He wants you to know that you are loved. That is one of the greatest things that we're going to take away from this Alpha course. God loves you so much that he came in the person of Jesus Christ to set you free to enjoy life to the full. Again, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so we, we yearn for this abundant life, don't we? And Jesus says, I came to give you that abundant life. And so the question is, are you enjoying life to the full right now? If not, then turn to Christ and ask him to come into your life. If you've never done that, that's absolutely necess uh, necessary. 
Ask him to answer the doubts that you have. And you will find Christ not only answering those prayers, but you will find an exciting life filled with joy and clarity. And don't you think our Western world needs clarity right now? I don't listen to a lot of the news, but I listened to some news recently, and I just look at our culture, and I feel like it's eating itself alive. We need clarity. We need the truth. And again, C.S. Lewis said, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun is risen. Not only because I see it, but by it I see everything else. And I'm not trying to be political, because I think there's issues on the Republican side and there's issues on the Democratic side. What we need is not a politician. What we need is a Messiah. What we need is Jesus Christ. And when we turn to him, we will be different. We will have a clarity, and we will have a confidence and a love that the rest of the world is desperately seeking. Just like I was seeking for those Reebok pumps all those years ago. It was dashed when I got my LA gear, right? You will find Jesus satisfying the hunger that lies deep within your soul. During Alpha, I encourage you to ask questions. Don't hold back. Ask any questions. And to the group, do not judge with whatever anybody says, right? Because this is a safe place. We want to be able to get to uh, the questions that are burning on your heart. Explore all the questions that you have. And if you do, I firmly believe that you too will find that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. With that... You've got about 20 minutes to enjoy uh, <laughs> your, uh, your breakfast. Uh, and uh, next week, we're going to look at who is Jesus. And so uh, make sure to take your books with you. Leave your name tags. And those who don't have name tags in particular, because I'm going to make new name tags for you. Because there's a good number of you uh, that I didn't have written down. And so I want to make sure that I get your name tags. And when you come next week, we'll have breakfast. I'll give the short teaching. And then you will go into uh, various groups. And so... Uh, I'm very excited that you all are here, and so for the rest of the 20 minutes, uh, or however you see fit, just enjoy uh, the table fellowship. Get to know those around you, and thank you all so much for coming today.